It seems that the vast majority of flat earthers counter the argument of gravity with the notion that relative density can account for the downward bias we see on our everyday lives. Everyone on earth knows that if you watch an apple break free from the tree, it will fall to the ground. So, does relative density disequilibrium also work when compared to mass attracting mass? Well, let's just start first and foremost with Newtonian physics and the notion that Einstein debunked Newton. What a load of old cobblers that is. I was around at the time when Sleeping Warrior found a citation in which he stated that Einstein's general theory of relativity superseded Newton's law of gravity. This is an egg. And that was all that the incredibly stupid Anthony Riley needed to make an entire case that Newton was debunked and no longer does mass attract mass. The stupidity level at this point was maxing out, but rather than being outright dismissed by the flurfs, they ran with it. Often now you will hear Nathan Oakley bleat on about how Newton's laws are worthless, and how all of gravity is a bending of concepts such as space and time. They act like little children and have no idea of how any of this interlocks with each other, and if they do, then they are just being dishonest tow rags. Based on Newton, there's a force equation to gravity, but that's if incorrect. you come to the present Sorry, that's gravity... incorrect. Do you want us to just stop a second, Anto? According to Newton, that was superseded 106, almost 107 years ago. Did yeah. you not know that? Yes, uh, gr gravity today is a bending of uh, space and time. Right, so why are you telling us what again, Newton I... said? I don't get it. You're telling us about something that's 107 years out of date for your argument? Why are you mentioning Newton? It's been superseded. It's not a force, as you just stated. According to Newton, it's a force, but that's been superseded by bending space-time. That's correct. So let's not talk about forces of gravity because it's not a force. End quote. Right. End quote, George Musa. Not really a force at all. End quote, Prof. Brian Cox. So we're not going to be claiming, claiming we've got a force to worry about. So when you said the thing nope. it does, what is that exactly? What is gravity? Exactly. It, uh, gr gravity actually, again, as, as you mentioned, is, is, is the bending on space uh, and time based on the mass I see. Uh, What's uh, uh, Stop. What's time? Bending yeah, of space here. and time, you said. What's time? Is it something that we can bend? No, uh, it's... Sorry, uh, stop! Based on... Stop! You said we're bending space and time. I asked what time is and if we can bend it and you say no. So we're not bending time then. What are you talking about? What is this nonsense? So gravity, not a force. It's not time bending because we can't do that. So when you said we're going to concern ourselves with what it is, what is it then? Well, it's not bending space-time, that's a concept, and it's not a force. So we're still at the stage where I say, what's gravity? It's not anything at this stage, because it's not a concept, it's time, bending, because you can't do that. And it's not a force, that was replaced, superseded, 107 years ago. Are we all clear on what gravity isn't? You still yet to tell us what it is. They pretend that the Cavendish experiment was a one-off event that happened centuries ago, in some old woodshed out in the back of some farmer's field. This is how they downplay that experiment in order to try to convince their audience that this is the only time it ever happened. What they won't tell you is that this very experiment is conducted hundreds of times in universities all around the world. In fact, a database has been made of all the different materials used as to show that the experiment works over and over again. In this paper here, we can see how the gravitational constant is measured currently. Teams of researchers from China and Russia recreated the Cavendish experiment. In the first approach, the researchers built a device consisting of a silica plate coated with a metal hung in the air by a wire. Two steel balls provided a gravitational attraction. The force of gravity was measured by noting how much the wire twisted. The second approach was similar to the first, except that the plate was hung from a spinning turntable that kept the wire in place. In such an apparatus, the gravitational force was measured by noting the rotation of the turntable. In both approaches, the researchers added features to prevent interference from nearby objects and disturbances, including seismic. They report the measurements here and here, and both of which the team claims are more precise than the two previous measurements. To put it easier for the flurfs to understand, on the local level, i.e. here on Earth, Newton's laws of gravity works amazingly well, and out in the cosmos, Einstein's general theory of relativity works very well. Of course, 
there is always room for improvement, but this is currently our best understanding of how things work. To summarise, Einstein did not supersede Newton. In fact, he broadened the research into gravity. Just because an article once used the word superseded does not mean that the flirts have debunked gravity. What jerks they are, right? Moving back to the apple on the tree, though, why did the apple head towards the ground? Well, gravity is mass attracting mass, so simple enough answer there. But how does relative density disequilibrium stand up in comparison? Let's find out. What is RDD? Well, if an object has mass, then depending on its surroundings, it will move to the area of least resistance. In other words, the density of the medium around it will determine where the object goes. In the case of the apple, the argument is that once it breaks from the tree, the air around it has less mass, and so it will fall through that mass until it meets something of greater mass to stop it. But, and I really have to thank Simon Dan for this, on his Friday show, he said something that was mentioned briefly, but which destroys RDD forever. I think his point, and the usual flat earth uh, stance on this, is that his phone is denser than the air around it, therefore it falls. Well, okay, but my phone is also denser than the air above it. In fact, if you want to be really technical about it, and really accurate, the air above it is very, very, very slightly less dense than the air below it. So, why doesn't a phone move upwards if that's the case? The phone moves down for a reason. Why don't you ever think about that one, Mikey, yeah? You see, the atmosphere has a density gradient. The higher up you go, the air is thinner. The air has less density, which means that the instant the apple is no longer supported by the tree, it has to choose a direction. Now, if RDD is real, and that the apple will go towards the area of least resistance, then it will actually go upwards towards the sky. Why is that? Well, on either side of it, the air is the same mass. Underneath the apple, the air has a greater mass than the air above the apple, even if it is microscopic. This is an undeniable fact. The air above the apple will have proportionally less mass than below it. So, the fact that the apple goes towards the area with greater mass flies in the face of the Fleur's RDD nonsense. In fact, when you compare the two theories side by side, then the clear winner is Newton's law of gravity, mass attracting mass. For RDD to work, if you were to take a tennis ball and throw it upwards, giving it both force and direction, then it should, in theory, continue going higher and higher and higher as it moves towards the less dense medium. But that is not what we see. What we see is a release of the ball and a slowing down of the ball till the point that it stops going higher and then returns back down to the earth. Now, what causes that? Because with the theory of RDD, then the ball would continue moving towards the area with less mass, and it does not. Essentially, if RDD was real, then if you were to take a jump upwards, you should continue to go upwards towards the less dense air, a bit like Superman trying to recharge his batteries from the sun. So, there we have it. RDD is totally debunked once and for all. Thanks, Sam and Dan, and also to Conspiracy Cats, who I am reliably informed has also mentioned this before. That will do for this one. And we'll see you all in the next one.